Same Old Story Theater proudly presents Nothing to Talk About, a fairy tale in five acts. Most of this really happened to someone. I want to laugh, but I'm crying, which is about as helpful as you think it is. So instead, I wipe the tears away and help her big naked body into the warm tub. She lets me. I ignore the hate streaming out of her. The shame hiding behind her anger is smoke, steam, insubstantial. My not shaking hands are solid granddaughter. My hands, not the hands of a stranger or a male relative, bathe her wrinkles smooth. Even if only one of us knows it, this is an act of dignity. Did you notice how dignity has the word dig in it? Sometimes her insults shove so hard and deep that I can't help yelling back too, all snot and tears. But hearing my own rage beat the wounded animal of my heart only makes it hurt worse. I've learned to keep my mouth shut. Only my eyes open wider at the vile things that this woman who used to be my grandmother is shouting. I tell my very big eyes, this is the dementia talking. This isn't her. My ears are the better not to hear her with. Once she's clean and quiet, my grandmother asks about why my dad isn't here. I feed her lies that taste like kindness, make sure she eats something. It's better for now. My tears are packed away, ready for travel. Everything's just for now, isn't it? There's a schedule mom and I set up, not mentioning it won't be forever. One day at a time, right? Mom's worry packs lunches inside rhetorical questions. S writes symphonies out of to-do lists. They're separated, my parents. My grandmother, the one who calls me names and digs her spit for poison every time I come to bathe her, is my dad's mom, not hers. My mom doesn't have to be here. She comes anyway, over the hill and through the woods, because she loves me. And also because guilt and decency are an integral part of our genetic makeup. <laughs> Family means something to us. Family <laughs> means something to us. Even separated, even broken, even and maybe especially when it hurts. Dad isn't her only son. Uncle D comes by every couple of days, cooking, cleaning, cracking jokes, filling the house with maybes. Uncle D never calls me. I call him to coordinate and check in because Uncle D doesn't know he's gotten old. He's a cracked window in an overstuffed attic. Cracked, that's me for sure. He sings, he plays guitar, he clowns, throwing knives and small axes none of which pays the bills. For that, he makes money hanging up window blinds. Good with his hands, with tools, he's lean and wiry like my dad. Unlike him, he never went to college. Unlike him, he's bendable into any shape. Life doesn't phase him. Uncle D keeps his graying hair long, as oblivious and nostalgic as every other Peter Pan. All these broken people in my broken family, how much of their strength and weakness is in me? Ladies and gentlemen, the intermission is an excellent time to join our behind the scenes tour. Come see where all the magic happens. Hey, sneak behind the scenes with me. 
close your eyes, make a wish on a star. Don't you think it's better to pretend like you're someone else sometimes? Everyone is constantly saying you need to be present in the moment. Still your mind and breathe. <laughs> but what if the moment you're in, the life you're in, is so awful that you can't breathe and you can't leave? But guess what? You sure as hell don't have to be present. <laughs> Isn't that where fairy tales come from? From stories too hard to tell straight? From forests so dark and pressing, pits so deep and fathomless that finding a way out is wishful thinking. That the only source of light worth wishing on is an already dead star billions of galaxies away. <sighs> but don't worry, darling. None of this is real. You're perfectly safe. This is just a tale as old as time that happened a long time ago in a faraway land to someone else. The main characters are only actors playing a part. All of this is just a big production. Ladies and gentlemen, the intermission is now over. Please take your seats. Didn't we all come here hoping for a good story? Well, sit back and enjoy the show. Thank God I have a job. It isn't fancy. No degree needed to be a teaching assistant at the Little Red Preschool. Money's not great either, but it's okay. It's not like I've ever dreamed of a grand career. That's not why I thank God for it. I'm good at it, even though I'm not a hugger. I'm not sweet. I don't coo at toddlers and smother them with attention. I don't coo at toddlers and smother them with attention. I just get them. They are savant-level genius at not being perfect. <sighs> they are just fine failing at everything every single day. <laughs> their parents are apoplectic. Not all, of course. Some have their own problems. But most of the ones springing for a private preschool in Del Mar are not OK with failure and have a pretty narrow definition of the word. I'm not good at dealing with the parents. I can barely handle my own, and mine didn't raise me anywhere close to Del Mar. If you just met a solid man, my dad's intensity comes after me as if I'm the one that needs convincing how things really are. I just want you to be settled, happy. His hands hold the engineering book against potential theft by the staff at the psych ward. He's so smart with books, with numbers and math, smarter than me in so many ways. The things that make such quick sense to him, have always been so hard on me. I want to cry, but I'm laughing, which is about as helpful as you imagine it to be. You don't think I want to be happy too, Papa? Getting into an argument about this is pointless. I can fill in every blank fired in the conversational volley we've been having half my life. 
No married, not married, and not even close. No retirement plan. Who will take, who will take care of me? Okay, he sighs. I sigh back. Sometimes it's hard to know whose fear is more real. I take the book from him gently and lay it on the table beside his cot. He lets me. I ignore the paranoia blowing the house down behind his eyes as his hand darts over mine. My not shaking hands are stable daughter. I notice the air stuck inside my lungs tell it this isn't a forever home. I remember breathing slowly. Breathe in, stable. Breathe out, bendable. Did you notice how able ends so many other words? Well, what else is going on with you? My dad asks the room. All of us are trapped inside one beast's belly or another's. I know that. Nothing, I answer, because there's nothing to talk about. Just the same old story. Bam first timer, Jane Mushinitz, everybody. All right, fantastic first half, right? <laughs>